All right, hello everyone. This is Professor Ruhi with a quick tutorial on using XML-based web services in a standalone fashion as well as in integrating it with another software. Uh, in our case, we're going to try to integrate this with Microsoft Excel. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is try to consume an XML-based web service using a standalone software. The software that I'm going to use in my scenario is Altova XML Spy. Um, it's a fantastic piece of software that I use for XML-based development as well as web service development and debugging. Um, and it also has a built-in SOAP engine which I can use to call um, XML-based web services. So that's the software that I'm going to use. In addition to this, I'm also going to use Microsoft Excel um, and uh, the most current version of Microsoft Excel, Excel 2013, um, has two built-in features which I can use. One is the web service function uh, and the other one is the filter XML function. Those are the two functions that I'm going to use. In case you do not have the current version of Microsoft Excel, uh, Excel 2013, you can download uh, plugins for older versions from this website called Office Powerups. Um, so just click on free downloads and go to Excel Powerups Premium Suite and you can download a 32-bit trial or a 64-bit trial for your um, Excel 2010 or Excel 2007, which, whichever version of Excel you're using. Um, so that will enable you to use um, the same uh, functions that I'm going to be using in Excel 2013. In addition to this, uh, my version uh, of uh, Chrome, on, on my uh, copy of Chrome, I also have an extension that I've installed. It's called XML Tree. Uh, I highly recommend this extension to anybody who is going to be doing work in XML. Uh, it allows you to work with XML-based documents uh, very easily. It allows you to figure out uh, the path to different XML elements, and it makes reading an XML file a lot easier. So I already have that installed as an extension in my Pro, and I would recommend that you uh, do the same thing. So uh, with that, let's get started with our example. Uh, so on the webservicex.net website, there is the currency converter web service, which we're going to use. Um, if I click on currency converter, it opens up a whole bunch of information about this service, including the location for the WSDL file, uh, the web service description language file for this service. Now, let me just copy and paste this into the URL to show you what the WSDL file looks like. Um, we've talked about this in our class before. Uh, the WSDL file uh, is an XML document that describes what this service is all about. Uh, what are the different operations that are available within this web service? Uh, what are the format of the parameters that are required by this web service? Um, and a whole bunch of other information about the web service itself. Now, we do not have to worry too much about this um, WSDL document. Uh, the software that we're going to be using um, on the requester side should be able to parse through this WSDL file and generate a stub for us uh, or um, use the various operations from within uh, the web service uh, and do uh, whatever it is that we want to do with this web service. So I do not have to worry about this WSDL file per se, um, but since I have the XML tree plugin uh, extension in my Chrome browser, I can click on the different parts of this file um, and I can actually read through it a little bit more easily. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the URL for this WSDL file into Altova XML Spy. In Altova XML Spy, I'm going to create a new SOAP request. So I'm going to click under SOAP and click on Create New SOAP Request. This is where I paste the URL for the WSDL file and I click on OK. Uh, as soon as I do that, uh, Altova XML Spy, the SOAP engine, uh, reads through the WSDL file and tells me that there are uh, two uh, bindings available to me for this web service. One is in SOAP and one is in SOAP 1.2, so I can choose either one of those. So let's choose the second one here. Click on OK. And now it tells me that within this web service, there's one operation called conversion rate, and that's the one that I need to use. So click on OK. 
Uh, as soon as you do that, it opens up the XML message that you need to format and that you need to modify before you send it to the service provider. Um, in this message, it's very simple. We just have two parameters. The first parameter is called from currency, and the second parameter is called the to currency. So in the from currency parameter, I just need to give it the three letter uh, currency code that I'm converting from. So let's say US dollars and the three letter currency code that I'm converting to. So let's say euros. So if I'm converting from US dollars to euros, okay, that is how I'll modify my message. And I'll click on SOAP again and click on send request to server. As soon as the request is sent to the service provider, um, it does its magic and it gives me back the conversion rate for US dollars to euros, which at this point in time is 0.7258. So we've just consumed a web service, the currency conversion web service, and we've gotten the result back. Uh, but in this case, we've used a standalone uh, requester agent or a standalone software on our end to get this. Now, ideally, uh, a web service should allow you to or the ideal use case for a web service is that you should be able to integrate this with any other software uh, that you might have. So that's what I'm going to do next. And in my example, I am going to use an Excel spreadsheet, which I've already set up. So if you look at this spreadsheet, basically what I have here is a product catalog of some sort um, with various products. And I have the prices of those products in US dollars, which is shown to me in column C. Now, I need to fill out columns D and E. In column D, I need to have the price in Canadian dollars. And in column E, I need to have the price in euros. So if this is my use case scenario, then uh, what my, web, what my uh, spreadsheet needs to have is the US dollar to Canadian dollar exchange rate and the US dollar to euro exchange rate. And rather than having to go to a website and get that exchange rate manually and plug it into the spreadsheet, what I would like to do is for the spreadsheet to call a web service, get the exchange rate directly, populate the cells in column H, and using those cells, calculate the values in columns D and E so that I do not have to do this and my web, and my web service talks to the spreadsheet uh, and the spreadsheet autonomously gets these from the web service and populates the appropriate cells for me. So that is the use case scenario that we're going to be working with. Uh, and this is where the web service function and the uh, filter XML function come in. So we're going to use those two new functions uh, and these are new, like I said, to Excel 2013. So before I can show you these functions within Excel, uh, let's try working with the web service call within our browser. So I've shown you how to use the web service call in Altova XML Spy, but let's try to see how we need to uh, formulate the URL to call this web service. Now, for pretty much any web service, uh, if you want to use it in your browser, the typical way that you um, formulate the URL is by providing the URL to the web service itself, which in our case, it's www.webservicex.net slash currency converter dot ASMX. Now, right after that, you basically need to um, give, put a slash at the end, provide the name of the function that you're calling or the name of the operation that you're calling. In this case, the operation is called conversion rate. So I'm going to call the conversion rate operation. And this operation basically takes two parameters from uh, from currency and the to currency. So basically what I have in this case is a from currency and a to currency. So that is my URL. So the URL that I'm going to use in this case tells me that this is the web service that I'm going to use, the currency converter web service offered by webservicex.net. This web service requires me to provide the name of the operation, which is conversion rate. This operation requires a from currency parameter, which I'm setting to US dollars, and it requires a to currency parameter, which I'm setting to Canadian dollars. And this is the syntax of the URL, right? So look at the syntax once again. You need the URL of the web service. You need the name of uh, the operation within that web service 
followed by a question mark, then the name of the first parameter equals to whatever value you're setting it to, ampersand symbol, the name of the second parameter equal to whatever you're setting that to. So now that we have this URL, I'm just going to press enter and see what happens. Okay, if uh, everything goes fine, then it is going to spit back the XML response for you. In this XML response, we see that the conversion rate between a US dollar and Canadian dollar right now is 1.1241, and it shows us that in our XML response. So this is a pretty simple response. There's only one XML element in this response, and they've uh, called it a double. So that's the name of the XML element in this response. Okay. So now that I have this URL, I can copy this. So I'm making a copy of this on my clipboard. And I'm going to go back into my spreadsheet. And in one of the cells, not the cell um, that I need the exchange rate in, I'm going to use another cell, maybe in column J. I'm going to use the web service function. So call the web service, use the web service function. And uh, the way you use this function is that you need to provide the URL and you need to enclose that within quotes. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to paste my URL in here. So look at the, the function itself. I'm calling the web service function and I'm providing the URL to the web service. Uh, this URL has already been formatted with the appropriate um, function call as well as the parameters for that function. I click enter and this basically gives me back the XML response that I also saw in my browser. So the XML response that I saw in the browser, that same XML response is shown to me in my spreadsheet. Now all I need to do is parse through this XML response and get the part that I'm interested in. So from this XML response, basically what's shown to you over here, from this response, I need to get the value of this element in my XML response, and the element's name is double. So there's a tag, there's an XML tag um, element, the, the name of the element is double, I just need to get the value of that. And this is where the filter XML function comes in. So I'm going to use the filter XML function, and in the filter XML function, I need to provide two parameters. The first parameter uh, points to the XML message that you are filtering from. So in this case, I have that in um, cell J3. That's where my uh, XML message is, uh, comma. And now I need to formulate an X path expression for uh, getting the element that I want. All right, so I'm going to open quotes and I'm going to give the X path expression for the element that I want. Now I know that this is a very simple XML message. There's only one element in there. It's called double. So I can just uh, say slash double and it should retrieve the value of that element for me. So whatever the value of the, the double element is, it should be able to retrieve that for me. So I close quotes, close uh, parentheses, and press enter. And sure enough, it goes through the XML uh, message and retrieves the value of the element double. And in this case, it's 1.1242. Okay. So basically what we did is a two-step process. First, we called the web service using the appropriate parameters. And then from the message that we received back, we use the filter XML function to get the value that we're interested in. So let's do the same thing once more for the US dollar to Euro exchange rate. So I'm going to copy over the same web service function, uh, two cells below. The only difference here is this time around, I'm converting from US dollars into Euros. So that's what I need to do. I press enter. Okay, uh, it tells me that it's 0.7258. Now let's uh, once again use the filter XML function to filter this XML response, which is in cell uh, J3, sorry, uh, which is in cell J5 for us. So that's what we're, we need to do. Sorry, I need to, let's do this again. So equals filter. XML 
okay point to the XML message in cell J5 and your X path this time around is the same I'm just retrieving the value that I see the text that I see in the element double right and I press enter and that gives me the exchange rate okay now that I have these two exchange rates I can now um, use a formula in columns D and E so the price in Canadian dollars is simply the price in US dollars times the US dollar to Canadian dollar exchange rate and let's use autofill for the rest of this column similarly the price in euros is the price in US dollars times the US dollar to euro exchange rate and let's use autofill all the way down okay so we've just created a spreadsheet now the spreadsheet is going to be able to auto autonomously call um, the web service for us and it will populate these cells in column H and then using those cells it will calculate the prices in the other currencies for us okay? so now that this website now that this spreadsheet is set up for us we can uh, save it and every time we open it it's going to do a new call to the web service and get the values for us every time we refresh this spreadsheet um, it's also going to do another call uh, to the web service okay so I hope this uh, makes sense we have uh, used the web service actually in three different ways we've used a web service in our Altovac ML spy software I've shown you how to use the web service in your browser and I've also shown you how to integrate this web service with an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so hope this makes sense. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Use the comments area to um, ask your questions. Thank you.